I'd like to call the eighth regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Be selective in your battles. Sometimes peace is better than being right. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? There are 14 present. Um, Alderman Thiel and Alderman uh, Mary Lynn Donahue are excused, and Mary Lynn Donahue is going to be listening on the phone with us. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is approval of our minutes from the last council meeting. Motion Alderman to approve Wolf. Minutes. Second. Thank Second. you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is resignation. City Attorney. Uh, there is one resignation, Diane Wilsensky, uh, resigning. Uh, from the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Council. Motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that whoa, motion. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, Sorry. wait. Who seconded? Wait. Thank you. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is a confirmation of Mayor's appointments. City Attorney. Uh, our appointments uh, today are uh, made by the mayor, uh, the following appointments for the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet for the Indiana Carter Neighborhood Association, Dean Decker as the primary and Peter Shalama as the alternate. Alderman Wolf. Motion to confirm appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we have a program, the 21st Century Policing. I'd like to call on Police Chief Christopher Domagalski for a presentation. Chris just returned from uh, a summit at, uh, at Washington, D.C. at the White House, and uh, he's, we appreciate his quick presentation. Good evening. Mayor and the city administrator just asked me to speak a couple minutes and uh, tell you about um, my trip that I took on Friday. So on Friday I was invited um, to the White House to talk about uh, 21st century policing. So those of you that, that aren't familiar, in December 18th of 2014, uh, the president issued an executive order creating the president's task force on 21st century policing. Um, Numerous listening sessions were done and information taken out, and as a result of that, they published a report uh, and recommendations around six policy areas, building trust and legitimacy, policy and oversight, technology and social media, community policing and crime reduction, training and education, and officer wellness and safety. Um, so over the past month, the White House has held uh, four meetings. This was the third of the meeting where they brought in um, police chiefs um, to discuss the report and more particularly the implementation of the report and the idea was to get um, uh, law enforcement executives together with the White House staff to talk about best uh, practices and implementation so that they could take those ideas and, and push them out to other departments um, so that they could try to implement them. So mainly what we did was discuss four areas, um, police, the White House Police Data Initiative something that was new to me, but um, I found very interesting, and I'll be following up with Dave Augustine on, on that. Over the past five years, we've done a, a tremendous amount of work really updating our data systems uh, so that we can better use the information um, that we have, and so one of the next steps, um, similar to what we do with our mapping tool and some of the other things, is gradually being able to push that um, data out where it's more accessible and transparent, so we'll be working on that. 
um, made some good connections there, and uh, the White House has some staff that we can work with for, for support to help us um, get through some of that. We talked about um, officer safety and wellness. Um, it's an area that I believe um, we've done a tremendous amount of work over the last five years. Again, many of the recommendations in the report we've already instituted, um, including um, issuing individual first aid kits to all the officers and giving them training um, so that they could use that. Um, one of the officers used that individual first aid kit last night on the bartender that was shot, and he uh, put a tourniquet on, on the victim's arm. So it really pays off when we have that stuff out there. We've put together a peer support team um, to provide uh, psychological and emotional support um, to the officers and um, get them to reach out and um, ask for help uh, when they're struggling with, with things. So that's in place. We've just in implemented a, a chaplain program. Um, one of our officers, Brandon Kehoe, a couple of years ago took the lead and worked with Aurora to institute a tactical fitness program in the department. So lots of really good things that are going on there that I think w that we can share um, with the White House so that they can push that stuff out to other departments. So helpful there. Um, they brought in um, Dr. Bryant Marks from Morehouse University to talk about implicit bias, um, so something that's recommended in the report and something that uh, the Justice Department just announced that they were going to train all of their employees. So when we're talking about um, implicit bias, what we're really talking about is unconscious bias. Everybody has biases. Um, the, the importance of the training here is recognizing that you have biases um, so that you can understand when those situations might pop up that, that your biases might come out and try to control for some of that. So this is something that, that again, I said the Justice Department, who is leading some of this, is just starting to implement now. In uh, 2013, um, we brought Dr. Lori Friedel to Sheboygan to train all of our supervisors and other supervisors in the county. And we then sent two of our supervisors, um, Sergeant Kurt Zempel and Lieutenant Doug Tennyson, um, to the East Coast to, uh, East Coast to a train the trainer course so that they're now uh, trainers on implicit bias in a program that we call uh, fair and impartial policing. They came back and in 2014 trained the entire department on that. Um, on the state level, we've instituted that as mandatory training as part of the recruit training in the department. We've also uh, implemented that into our Citizens Academy program and some of our in-service programs. So we're way, way ahead of the curve in that area. And again, I think we have some suggestions and ideas that, that we can share with other people. Um, we've also been asked um, to do the training on that in the command college. So the command college is a program that we developed through the state for law enforcement leaders um, to provide them command level training um, in, um, in um, Late August here, they're going to be starting um, the third class for the command college, and Sergeant uh, Scott Reinecke will be attending that class. So good things for us there. And then the last um, area that they concentrated on was using social media and storytelling, really, to, to get the, all the positive things that we're doing out there. And so I think we've, we've made some progress on that. Um, I shared um, at the staff meeting this morning that they had a... a a representative from Tumblr, which is a social media application that I'm not familiar with, but um, it, it was very interesting, and, and I think it's something that, that we could look at, um, not only in the police department, but really as <coughs> the city, to help tell the story about the things that we're doing. So that was my trip one day, um, some good information, made some good contacts, and really appreciate the opportunity to be invited out there. Thanks. I think that's a real tribute to Chris and his department that they were selected to participate in these meetings in Washington. And Chris, thank you very much for that report. Next, we'll go on to public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have one this evening. Lisa Roberts. If you'd like to come on up. Lisa, Hi. can I have your home address, please? 518 South Pier Drive. Business is 510 South Pier Drive. Right. And you will have five minutes. <coughs> five minutes? This is going to take longer than five minutes. All right. Um, 
I just spoke at the zoning committee, is it, Jen? Is that the last meeting it was? Planning, Planning Commission. On the development of the townhouses on South Pier. I'm gonna try to make this short. It's not that I'm totally against them, but I really think as a city council, you should reevaluate this whole um, decision you're making here tonight. I think that a traffic study should have been done in South Pier. I think a parking study should be done in South Pier. I really need you guys to look back at what South Pier used to be about four and a half years ago, five years ago. I've been down there for six and a half years, and it has increased immensely in six and a half years. And when Blue Howard Bear was sold, it has really increased in that period of time. Um, they do great advertising for Sheboygan. People have come from all over, and I really feel that the parking will be um, less if you put these townhouses up. I think there's many, many other places in Sheboygan on the water that you could put these townhouses. Again, I'm not totally against it, but what business does it want to come down there if there's no parking? We already have a parking <coughs> problem. I do. I know um, so, um, South Pier Ice Cream Parlor does. I know Lino's does. I can sit here and watch the people parking in Blue Harbor's parking lot. Where are they supposed to park? Yes, they gave me a path across the grassy path. Well, my grandmother's not gonna walk that far, so nobody's gonna stop in and have a fish fry. I asked a long time ago to bring that parking up to the sidewalk. It never was done, we got the path. I don't think when I bought this property there that anybody told me that this was gonna be townhouses across. Now they wanna rezone it. I didn't know that six and a half years ago when I was building my businesses that all of a sudden there's gonna to be townhouses. Nobody said that to me. I think this should all go back to the board and let the businesses down there discuss it with um, development committee or whoever it is, a developer. I know he came down and talked to me and it's like, still, this um, South Pier, this peninsula was a dump at one time. I was here, I saw it when I went fishing out there. It took this long for your local people to come down and enjoy part of Sheboygan. If you guys take this away from the city people, the city people are gonna be upset. It's something they've lived, had memories, and now <coughs> can enjoy. And you guys are gonna take this away from them. And $1,500 a month <coughs> to rent, what? I think it should have maybe some weekend rentals with businesses below and above and weekly rentals I know lots of places down there that they do that, and they're very, very busy. People want to come from all over and stay there. People yeah, that are even attending everything in Elkhart Lake, there's no um, places to stay. So I really am pushing for this to go back to be a uh, better study on this. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Thanks, Lisa. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. On your desk, you'll find a memo on Lakefront Water Safety Task Force. After the water rescue about a week ago, I asked Joe Kerland to place this on the agenda of the Marina Parks and Forestry Committee. After the uh, occurrence uh, this last weekend, I revised that to include both the beaches and the, uh, and the piers, and um, this will be brought up at the um, next meeting of the um, Board of Marina and Parks. That will be coming up on August 2nd for their consideration. I also like to remind our residents that the uh, resident survey, we need your help to shape Sheboygan for the future. This is an online survey. You can just go to the city website, click on the banner ad, and uh, that'll take you to the website where you can uh, answer the survey questions. If anyone does not have a computer and they'd like to participate, they can either go to the Mead Public Library, there's a dedicated computer there for people to take surveys, and also the Senior Activity Center. And the surveys will be available until um, July 28th. Also a reminder for the aldermen, 
Ms. Servio is going to be leading into a strategic planning workshop. Uh, we still need everybody to answer the doodle poll on the dates that you might be available to participate uh, in a three-hour meeting of the aldermen and staff as we begin this a strategic planning process. Um, another summer festival is coming up soon. Uh, Alderman Lassard asked me to mention that the Lakeshore Weekend for Kids is going to be taking place at South Pier, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Uh, and it'll take place from Friday through Sunday. That's July 29th through 31st. Things will open up at 5 o'clock on Friday and continue through 5 o'clock on Sunday. They'll have uh, fireworks on Friday night. There'll be a new water ski show and also the familiar dragon boat races. And uh, some of you had some questions about our city college that's going to take place after the meeting tonight. And I'd just like to let you know for the future that on the last meeting that we have each month for the next several months, we'll be trying to plan another city college. And those will uh, be taking place on a regular basis. So on uh, August 15th, the session will deal with uh, city reserve funds. Then we'll go on to public hearings. The first public hearing uh, is item 2.1, a hearing to be held this evening to discontinue the alleged public way located within the bounds of city-owned lanes commonly known as the Shukert Farm property. Is anyone wishing to be heard on this hearing? Is anyone wishing to be heard on this hearing? Is anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Wolf? Make a motion to uh, close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of clear, uh, closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Item 2.2 is the hearing to be held this evening to amend the zoning map, the official zoning ordinance to, to change the use district classification of an interior vacant lot, uh, vacant land rather, on South Pier from class PU, uh, PPUD to class South Pier PUD classifications. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Uh, Madam, would you like to come up first? Please state your name and address and then proceed with your comments. My name is Mary K. Meyer. My address here in Sheboygan is 650 South Pier Drive, unit number eight. I'm directly across from where you're planning to build or planning to rezone. And I do have some serious concerns. They were mentioned a little bit this evening already. Um, your traffic flow down there is- Could you please speak into the microphone? Your Thank traffic you. flow down in that area is very poor. Um, uh, you had an incident just this weekend that proved again that there needs to be better ve vehicular um, access <laughs> to South Pier. Um, I think if you go ahead and allow that change, um, you're gonna see that not only is there a parking issue, because even though you're saying there are, they're going to have uh, two car garages, these people, um, they're going to be rentals and they'll arrive just as they do for the Blue Harbor area with not one family, but several families or several people. Uh, living in one unit to afford the cost or the, the, um, the fees that would be in, uh, involved in staying in the unit. And then you'd have the parking spilling over into those areas that are already overtaxed at certain times of the year. And to um, Ms. Richards' um, comments, you've got such a wonderful community and you've got so many wonderful community events happening out in that area that when you put that housing in there you're going to detract from that the people that are using it today will no longer have access to it not only because there isn't going to be a traffic flow already people you you yourselves the police um, set up a an area this last fourth of july to provide um, relief for the traffic problem that is already uh, down there um, you uh, uh, encouraged riding bicycles and had police staffing down there to uh, watch the corral of bicycles. I don't know how effective it was because I didn't wander down to see that area, 
But um, it took hours <coughs> for people to exit um, the 4th of July event. And then with this last weekend's um, trauma down there, I would hate to think that a life would be lost because of a traffic issue. So my request tonight is that you put off uh, amending um, your zoning until you provide access, and I believe there is a discussion for extending 7th Street um, to, to access the pier area, the pier drive. Until you do that, I think you're going to have major issues similar to what you have on the 4th of July, um, and to begin the, the process of building at the back end, at the end closest to the lake, um, is foolish from a standpoint of the traffic flow as well as for those people viewing it and your desire to sell. And I'm sure that the developer is thinking we need to sell these units or we need to rent these units when they're at the and I'm not sure what street it is, but at the turnaround, at the, the circle. It would be a much better location to begin. Phase one might work there and then see how it works. And once 7th Street is extended into the pier area, then it's possible <coughs> that maybe a large complex like that might work. But right now, you don't have the parking and you don't have the traffic adequately um, taken care of for that area back there. Plus, not only that, but you'd be robbing the community of access to the events that are taking place down there that are sponsored by community leaders. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Sir? <coughs> name, an, name an address, please. 342 South Pier Drive. I keep this thing up here. I'm Bob Moeller. <clears throat> Bob, you may want to just hold the mic. All right. I'm the guy that put the golf course in, Lino's, Dri Lino's Restaurant, the South Pier, and the building that I happen to live in right now. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got two and a half million dollars of my own money invested in that place. And yeah, things are changing. Uh, I want to do some more developing down there, but we got a problem. We got a serious problem. I can't believe not one alderman asked the question. How <clears throat> pathetic is that? But anyways, we have eight ac acres of parking down there. 4.2 acres of it is consumed by Blue Harbor Resort. That means 3.8 acres is available for every other business and every other housing project. And we don't even, we're, we're, you're, here, you're here tonight to change the zoning, and there hasn't even been an impact study done on how much parking will be left once it's in. I asked to put a cut into the driveway to put a parking lot in for myself. One cut, Mr. Ryan, I think, would go along, would take up three to four parking spaces. And you got 85 of these going with driveways each? Where, is the, where are they coming in and where are they going out at? We, don't, we do not have parking. As it is now, I mean, uh, some of the patrons down there that own businesses are putting cones out in their places to, to, uh, to save parking for their customers. The golf course is charged for, for 18 parking spaces. There's no parking spaces for the golf course. And every time you cut the circle off, you cut the circle off. In the world of, of miniature golf, and we got one of the best ones and the only one on Lake Michigan, Okay, the number one day of the year is the 4th of July for income. It has never been the number one day for us, ever, because they cut the circle off. They put, the, we, have a, uh, we have an amusement company comes in here, they're used to, they're, I, I know that they're used to working out in the, on grass. We put them in the parking spots instead of putting them on the grass and, losing the, and using the parking there. Something has to be done. This is ridiculous. We have people hot rodding after 10 o'clock up and down that street like crazy. I mean, nobody's addressing any of those parking <coughs> issues out there. It's pathetic. If there was an, an emergency on the 4th of July, there would have been a serious problem for anybody to try to get in there. And you should see what it's like living there. And if all of a sudden you come in with groceries and you've got to park two blocks away. 
You know, that's all I'm saying. Whoever this developer is should be willing to do an impact study and tell us exactly how many slots are going to be available to park. Because we don't have enough now, and if there is not any more created, I don't know how we can do that. I won't invest anymore. Who is going to invest anymore into that uh, a lakefront property? That's all I got to say. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there another one over here? Please come up. Good evening. My name is Joe Grosh. I am uh, one of the developers of the Portscape Apartments. My business partner, Dave, and I have been working extensively in the city of Sheboygan for over the last year now. We started on a <coughs> dilapidated project on Broughton Drive, put a lot of money into that property, cleaned it up, and it's been a welcome addition to the community. After we finished that project, Mr. Hammond and other city leaders sought us out in order to try to come up with some solutions that would make the South Pier area more vibrant and be a catalyst towards future development in the South Pier District. We've worked extensively with the, the RDA, all city staff, the mayor, everybody that we can possibly work with, including owners in the South Pier area, clearly not some of these who are opposed to it. We've, we've worked with quite a few people, and what we, I guess. Please don't interrupt. Sorry. What, what we want to emphasize is that we've worked with many, many of the city officials. We've put in a ton of investment into making the South Pier District a vibrant commercial area again. One of the biggest issues that we hear is parking. I want to emphasize that our project exceeds the City of Sheboygan Municipal Code for parking spaces per unit. We are building auxiliary parking lots, but we're not taking away, actually we're taking a few parking spaces away from the common parking in the area. We are taking away a very, very small amount. I believe it's only 12 spaces out of all the spaces that are there. We are creating over 256 parking stalls for our 88 units, which is well in excess of 2.5, which exceeds the City of Sheboygan's requirement. So the point is, is that we have worked diligently to work through these issues. The parking issues were something that were brought up almost immediately when we first had, when we had discussions with the RDA. And we changed the project. We modified things. That's why this project has taken so long to even get to this point. So I want to emphasize how excited we are to be here, how much we feel that this project, this, high, this is an incredibly high-quality project that's coming to the South Pier area, and how we feel, and many, many other people feel that this project is going to be a very strong catalyst to seeing the South Pier District hit its maximum potential. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone who, else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Yes, ma'am? Yeah, please come up if you're going to make a comment. We will not debate anything. All you can do is make a comment. Okay. <clears throat> I guess my comment is it is a question because I don't know the, the logistics as to why you didn't publish the request. Instead, you sought someone out according to the prior speaker. And that doesn't sound quite right to me, and so I, I'm, I'm asking, why was someone sought out? Was there no one interested in that space? And why did you choose someone? Are you from Sheboygan? You own property, in Sheboygan. You own property but you're not a resident of Sheboygan? That is all. That this is on the agenda for some debate later, and maybe we can get to answering your question then. Oh, okay? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Would, did you have another comment? Yeah. I, my only comment is I have nothing <coughs> against the developer. I, well, I want to see housing down there. Uh, in fact, the, the project that I would like to do is going to require more housing down there. I have no problem with that whatsoever. <coughs> but I've stood before the 
council before and, and said the reason I'm holding off is because we, ha we, have a <coughs> we have a problem with parking. That's all I'm saying. And yet nobody asked me for input on anything. And I, I just can't even imagine what South Pier would be like if we didn't have what, we've, what I've already put on there. Okay? That's all I'm saying. I have nothing against the developer. I, I, housing is what we want. Better parking is what we need. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Wolf. I make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll uh, include items 3.2 through 3.7. Alderman Wolf. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion in support. The consent agenda is before us. Is there any discussion on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll for passage. Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Next, uh, under reports of officers, items 4.1 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue approving the second amendment to WB 13 vacant land offer to purchase between the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Wolf. Make a motion to suspend Second. I have a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I make a motion to pass all re resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, I'd like to call up uh, Director of City Development, Chad Pelichek. The reason for the suspension in the item that's before you is uh, related to the art center and the proposed art preserve on the former Schuchert property. And all it does is it changes the due diligence period and adds one more day. So the due diligence period ended on July 27th. We were to close on the property July 29th. It, it puts the due diligence period to July 28th. We're still closing on the 29th. It's just that they're finishing up a couple studies and they're not gonna have the results in time for those deadlines, but they feel comfortable that they'll be moving forward on the 29th with the closing. Thank you for that explanation, Chad. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was reserved, re referred RO number 46 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends that transient merchant license application 1290 be denied based on his failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. I'm wondering if Mr. Alec Atkins is here. He is not. He was invited to our committee on two occasions and did not appear in either one. The committee voted, um, <coughs> everyone voted to deny the license. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Thirteen ayes and one abstention. Motion passes. 
Item 6.2 is an RC by Public Works to whom is referred resolution number 44 of 1617 by Alderman Bellinger authorizing entering into a memorandum of understanding with the Sheboygan Park project regarding fundraising, location, ownership, construction, and naming rights for a universally acceptable playground designed for use by children of all abilities and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I would just uh, like to say that this is going to be a tremendous asset to the community. We've worked through Marina Parks and Forestry as well as the Public Works um, in, in numerous meetings to get this to where it's at, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it, as I'm sure are the Shaw family. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 49 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf authorizing the city of Sheboygan to purchase replacement production equipment for the cable TV studio and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Wolf. Thank you. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 53 of 1617, direct referral by Alderman Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish an appropriation for cable TV equipment and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Wolf. Thank you. Again, I'd like to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The items before us for discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Twelve ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is an RC by finance to whom is referred resolution number 54 of 1617 Alderman Wolf authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish an appropriation for elections temporary salaries and recommends that the resolution be passed Alderman Wolf. Thank you again I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support is there any discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. <clears throat> 13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is an RC by salary and grievances to whom is referred a copy of RC number 48 of 1617 by law and licensing and general ordinance number 9 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue repealing and recreating section 2, 221 of the municipal code relating to normal working hours and recommends passing the ordinance. And then we also have a companion document. There was a dual referral, 6.7 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RC number 84 of 1617 by law and licensing relating to the normal working hours and recommends that sending the documents back to council with no recommendation. Alderman Wolf. Thank you. I would like to make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wasn't <coughs> able to attend the Salary and Grievance Committee or Law and Licensing, and I would just like to hear from the chairman or vice chairman of those committees as to how the, w how the discussion went and also maybe have <coughs> the city administrator make some comments on that, on that item. 
Thank you for those comments. Anyone care to respond? Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there was considerable discussion at salary and grievance on this, on this ordinance, and I think the, the general understanding after we talked about it with the city administrator was not basically to drastically change the hours of the operation within uh, City Hall, but yet to come up, come up to some solutions as far as staffing, uh, concerns for lunch hours and stuff like that there. Thank you for those comments, Administrator. Uh, as you correctly identified, uh, the current uh, city code identifies <coughs> specifically the hours, uh, 8 to noon and then 1 to 5, uh, with the exception of, of certain offices will be open continuously during that, pe during that period. Uh, uh, the hope and the goal is to work with the department heads uh, that are located in City Hall to look at the possibility of, you know, having uh, all offices open uh, throughout the day during that lunch period uh, in light of uh, other workers uh, in the downtown area that may want to do business with, with the City Hall uh, departments. Uh, with the current ordinance in effect, uh, we would not be able to do that. Uh, we're also looking at uh, time management uh, and uh, traffic as far as pedestrian and phone traffic and uh, want to work with the existing staff uh, to f figure out how best to utilize uh, their, their time uh, without paying overtime to provide, again, the number of hours necessary to carry out business uh, Monday through Friday. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate the, the, the point that the spirit of this is to give our city administrator the, the ability to work with the management and within the, the guidelines as far as the hours and uh, in which areas needed coverage and being open for our citizens. That's all. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our committee discussed this at great lengths as well, and the, um, the vote was two to two. And the concern was that the hours are going to change for City Hall in the fact that we'll be closing City Hall at 430. And I think that was the major objection to all of us that objected to it. Um, I'm not in favor of the office hours changing for City Hall, so I won't support this. But um, that was the discussion. That It seemed like it wasn't going to be an issue just as you have spoken about because I don't think that was an issue. It was more of an issue of changing City Hall hours so people can't get access. They're all familiar with the City Hall being open till 5 o'clock, and now they want to change that to 4.30, although I didn't hear any mention of that. So perhaps our city administrator could give me some clarity on that. Thank you for those comments. Go ahead, city attorney, uh, administrator. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, we have uh, worked with the, with the management team uh, for those that represent City Hall, uh, asked them to do uh, again, studies, uh, taking, uh, taking, uh, uh, being aware as to uh, early in the day, during the lunch hour, as well as uh, at the end of the day, as far as again, pedestrian and uh, telephone uh, traffic. Um, similar discussion did occur at salary and grievances. Um, I, I, I heard very clearly the expectations of those members who serve on that committee, and as a result, uh, there is no intention at this time to closing uh, City Hall hours earlier than 5 o'clock. Thank you very much. Appreciate that discussion. Is there any other discussion? If not, is that a roll call? <clears throat> Kirk, please call the roll for passage. Twelve eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Next section is ordinances. Uh, item 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to the Salary and Grievances Committee. And then we'll move on to matters laid over. 
8.1 is an RO number 53 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 5 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue and Jose and RO number 42 of 1617 by the City Clerk amending the zoning map of the official zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of property located in the interior vacant land on South Pier from class PPUD to class South Pier Sheboygan PUD 2016 classification and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass your ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Jose. Uh, although my, na <clears throat> my name apparently appears on it, I just want to point out that I have consistently opposed uh, the housing project on South Pier, and I voted against it at every opportunity. And uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, in favor of a, I think because it's my district, this automatically my name appeared on there. Correct, City Clerk? Thank you. That's correct. You're in that district. Yeah, and uh, I do not, even though my name appears on the document, I do not support the housing project on South Pier. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've had two personal experiences down there this summer, uh, the latest one being on the 4th of July weekend. <clears throat> my wife and I and uh, two other couples had a reservation at Lino's at 6 o'clock on the 4th of July on Saturday, and it was my understanding from reading in the paper that the carnival was not going to be in operation that night, so I went ahead and made a reservation. When uh, my wife and I and the people we were with got down three separate vehicles, we got down to the roundabout at about 5.15. The, car, the traffic was backed up to the entrance of the roundabout, and there was no movement at all. So rather than sit out, uh, sit out on the roundabout and blocking traffic coming off of uh, 7th Street on that part of the roundabout, we, uh, we pulled up to the liquor store and uh, we just decided that it was going to be impossible for, for us to get down there. And so I called uh, Lino's and canceled my reservation and we were still able to uh, spend our money that night in Sheboygan. Uh, my friend John Stangy over at Pier 17 was able, was <coughs> able to get our party in without a reservation. So, uh, but it was a mess. It was an absolute mess that night. Uh, earlier this summer, I believe it was in uh, early June, we also had a reservation uh, at Pier 17 on what I would call a regular weekend. There was no, there was no Elkhart Lake, nothing going on, and parking was an ab at an absolute premium down there also that night. And uh, for people that have some mobility issues, uh, to be able to, to, to be able, to have to be able to walk 300 yards to get to a restaurant. I mean, it's a pleasant problem for the business owners down there. I'm glad to see they're busy, but it is ridiculous with the parking down there. I've been down to Anglers several times, and I'm going down there with a friend on Wednesday noon, and I've been down there on weekdays, uh, and again, it's a pleasant problem for those business to ha businesses to have down there, but it's very, very difficult uh, for parking. I was glad to hear that the developer uh, is uh, planning on exceeding the, uh, the parking requirements for his development, but I think in addition to that, there has to be some changes made down there because uh, frankly, it's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I have some concerns about the parking as well and, and um, had talked to a few people about having a parking study done quite some time ago and, and I don't know if anyone's if it's been implemented or not. I have two questions. Number one, is it possible to change the zoning on just the first phase of this development and not on the second phase and implement a parking study? Chad, can you answer that question? <clears throat> I would believe that's a possibility, although I think from a standpoint of the developer and trying to secure financing for both phases, of the project, um, they're probably going to want to know that they've got some assurances that the dev that they can continue to develop out the 88 units. Or I'm I'm thinking their performa probably isn't going to work. What I would like to say, though, on the two traffic uh, issues, both the um, traffic uh, 
on the street as well as the parking situation down there. Um, in the master plan that was adopted originally in 2003 and amended in 2011, it looked at this, these interior parcels as being developed, not being recreational or uh, event space, but to be either retail, commercial, or uh, housing, or a mix of the live work. So if, if we were to uh, propose and, and do a continuation of what we're doing along the riverfront, um, on the shanty type development, but on this side of the street, uh, facing the streets, I think from a uh, retail commercial standpoint, we would have more park, more uh, parking and traffic issues than we will with housing. I think housing has uh, people come in, they leave. It's all throughout. It's more sporadic. It's not an eight to five or an eight to six o'clock timeline like you would have in a um, normal retail development or a restaurant or something where it's pinpointed to that timeline. So I think out of the options that are out there, personally, I think uh, housing is, is a good fit. What I would say is the um, stipulations, this is a rezoning, so the stipulations of those uh, concerns related to the traffic and the parking could should be addressed at the Planning Commission, which they will be at next uh, Tuesday. Um, as part of the conditional use permit process, those can be addressed there. Um, but the council could make a recommendation to prove this subject to either a traffic impact study being done and or a parking study. Um, in my 2017 parking, my 2017 uh, capital improvements request, I requested a downtown parking study um, because I think parking is going to become an issue downtown with the recent developments. We could tag along the South Pier and get some recommendations going forward on what to do down there as part of that. So I think there's a way of having the developer just has have his engineer look at the traffic that would be generated from this and bring you know bring the planning commission back some of those. Um, impacts on traffic and we can deal with the parking as a part of a amendment to the downtown parking structure. I mean downtown parking study. So I think that can be done. I would say though I would recommend that the council uh, proceed forward and rezone all four, all, both phases or all four properties of this development. Thank you, Chad. Anything else, Alderman Lassard? Yes, thank you. I, I understand that it's, you know, he needs <coughs> to know that he's getting the whole parcel to get his whole project done, but and and that's his gamble. But our gamble is, if he does the first phase and it isn't successful, then the city's got the gamble of the second phase not happening. That's correct. And the developers so both ways. The, the developers' gamble. agreement has been built out that way. But I think <laughs> it's it's a, his intention to build out the entire project. Um, the RDA, who owns the property and has control over the property down there, um, they had raised that concern, and that's why the first the fa it's divided broke up into the two phases. And phase one is the southern two parcels that are the less marketable par parcels, and then the northern two parcels would be phase two. But I think the developer needs to have, I, I, he probably, I believe he needs to have that assurity that this can happen on these four parcels if the, you know, f as he's planning to move forward with both phases. Well, what happens to us if we do a parking study and it doesn't work that that's feasible for down there? So we've given, changed the zoning. There's, they're going to be doing their building. And then we've done the study that you're speaking of. And what if it's, what if it's not a great idea for the city because of the parking? and the, the, the amount of traffic that's down there. Where does that leave the city? Jed? I would say that at that stage, we'd have to look at some opportunities that may exist on adjacent parcels like the former Pentair property or how to maximize uh, parking on the properties that we have left. There will be interior parcels left that can be expanded, particularly around the spaceport um, that aren't being developed. And as well as there's a large, there'll be a parcel left across from Blue Harbor and maybe those, par those need to become surface lots as part of whatever recommendation a consultant would bring forward. Well, with that being said, knowing that you have those things available, I think the assurance that if we can work this out for the last phase, would be com coming forthcoming, but until then, I think we should only be approving the first phase of the building, giving us plenty of time to do the second part. If what you're saying is true about adding additional parking spots, then there should be no concern for our developer. But we don't have we don't have anything to say to all those people that have businesses down there that's concrete. Yes, we have parking. This is where it's going. This is we would like to have more development down there and you'll be able to do more development down there because we have this parking for you and we have this traffic flow for you. 
we can't say that today, but you're asking me to make an approval on a big complex, putting the horse before the cart until we find out these addressed things that have been addressed by the people that have come forth, which are our constituents. So I would be more than happy to support this um, amended or whatever it needs to be done, that the first phase of this development be approved and then based on the study that we come to find that you were speaking of, then we will approve the, sec the last phase of it. And I would make a friendly motion or whatever you have to do to get that implemented so that this study is done. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd ask if you can maybe open the floor to the developer and ask him to just come forward and address how he feels about splitting the zoning on the property. I can't answer that on his Is there behalf. any objection to opening the floor? No. Seeing none, would you like to step forward? In regards to this proposed uh, change, it's it's going to be very difficult for us to really look at this hard. Uh, I understand where the city is coming from. I think if if that was our only choice, I think that's probably the direction we have to go in. We're not here to ram anything down anybody's throat, although we have worked for almost a year on this project with incredible due diligence and resources spent up, up until this point. Uh, and from the development standpoint, the development of phase two is what really makes this project work. Uh, I think that what I would ask as the developer is we would definitely like to see the whole project rezoned. We like the idea that Chad said about looking including some of those items within the traffic study uh, later at Planning Commission. It's going to be very difficult for us to move this project forward with just saying, oh, we only have 52 units. If we're only left with a 52-unit project at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to be a good project for us. But I would, I would just say that if, <coughs> if that's what the recommendation of the council is, then I, I think we're just going to have to go back and reassess. And if our, hopefully our decision is going to be after we look at everything to keep moving forward. But I'm not, I can't tell you as an absolute fact that that's going to be the case at this point. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I think this situation is uh, a great situation that I think for years and years and years we've been pretty much waiting for this to happen. Uh, we look at situations and we say, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, we've had some great investment opportunities with businesses on the riverfront, and that's, that's taken many, many years to get established. Um, I, th I agree the parking is an issue. I think that what we need to do is get the parking, um, parking study wrapped into our other study that we're doing. I think we owe that to our constituents. Um, I personally think that we should still approve phase one and phase two because it's going to take some time to get, to get that going. Um, but knowing that the city leadership, the group here, has heard it, um, more than once, more than twice about the, the parking and that there is open areas yet that the city should definitely focus on additional parking um, because even if we don't have um, this construction and this building and this, this additional um, opportunity take place in the, in the South Pier, something else is going to have to go in there. We need this. We need this development. We need this growth. And parking is going to be an issue. And as we heard, um, they've got, what, 2.5 2 parking compared to what our, our typical ordinance is. So really, uh, the city leadership here needs to look at parking um, with or without <coughs> this development, but we, we, we want this development, and uh, I'm still going to support it with the understanding that the city is going to do a, a study <coughs> and with the understanding that we need to help them with the traffic going in and out. And I know we've talked about that in meetings that, uh, you know, which comes first, putting more roads in for better access or and having nothing there or getting the development and then putting the roads in. So we're on the right path. We just have to continue to 
to go with the direction that it's going. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I represent the council on the plan commission and I know this developer has been working diligently with the city officials for over a year. Um, there's been numerous things going back and forth anywhere from the appearance of the buildings, the, 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 uh, the design, the colors, the, uh, uh, the uh, appearance of the roofs, you know, the, um, dormers, driveways, parking, all of that. Um, this developer has exceeded our minimum requirement for parking. So if this was an issue of the developer saying, you know what, I can only do this project and I can't meet your minimum, I'm going to have to be below that, that would be one issue, but that's not. Obviously, this parking issue uh, predates this development. There is an issue down there with the parking, and it should be addressed, and it, sh and it should be um, come to some resolution that is going to make these business owners um, you know, happy or accept the outcome of, of what that, whatever that is going to be. Um, but to hold up this project and, and put this project, a $13 million project that's been you know, in the works for over a year um, because of pre-existing conditions, essentially, um, parking issues that are down there, I think is the wrong way to go. If I owned a business down there, I would be thrilled that there's going to be development down there and I'm going to have a captive audience and they're going to be coming in and out of there every day and they're going to be looking for places to eat. They're going to be looking for places for activities, for the, for the miniature golf, for everything that is located down there, for the ice cream, for, um, you know, the Anglers Avenue. They're going to be looking at all that, you know, as, as destinations for their um, disposable income. So I think it's crazy to, you know, for these, these people to um, oppose this um, for, for that reason, for parking. Um, they have driveways, they have garages. Um, the parking issue, again, predated this development, and I think it does need to be addressed and looked at. I'm not saying it's not an issue or a concern by these owners. Obviously, it's a very grave concern, and they're voicing their opinion, and we should listen to that, and we should be addressed in the plan commission. But again, I think separating um, the, the two parcels and doing a rezone of one and not the other only puts the financing in jeopardy and the whole project in jeopardy. And I don't think we want to do that. I think we've got someone who's worked in very good faith with the, with the city to this point <coughs> and um, has exceeded their expectations for parking. I think that uh, we should move this forward and address the parking as a separate issue through the plan commission. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I think it's more than just parking. I also think it's traffic flow. But I'm wondering, are we going to be able to put an amendment to this to say that we're going to be doing what you had suggested, Alderman Wolf? I mean, will that be a stipulation <coughs> approval that the city add those parking spots on that, that Chad was speaking about or the study? Are you going? Is it amended, or is it just going to read like this, and then we go on the word that we're going to be doing it? Uh, okay, I'll give Alderman Wolf the floor to respond. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess the question would go. I need Chad's assistance here. We already have approved um, a parking study for the city of Sheboygan, correct? We just don't have it including the South Pier. We submitted as part of a 2017 capital improvements request that'll be coming to the commission on tomorrow. <coughs> Um, so the idea would be to tag along with that. I would believe, I, I guess I'd look to the city <coughs> administrator, I would believe it's probably a project since it's part, mostly funded with downtown TID dollars that it probably you know, would be recommended to move forward. So it's up to you guys to you know, make sure that happens and then we can obviously include this self peer piece to it. The other part about it is I would say the traffic impact. I, I, it'd be very easy for the developer to just have his consultant run some numbers and see what that traffic impact is going to be and present that as part of his plan to the con with the conditional use permit as part of the plan commission approval. Okay, he'll agree with it. To that. Okay, so what, what would you like from me? Well, I think Mr. we Mayor, ha under have this, the response. Under this, can they, I guess I look to the city attorney, can you amend this ordinance to put those conditions in it, or can those be um, included in the minutes and just uh, part of the planning commission approval? Someone can make a motion to amend if they so choose. 
I'll make a I'll make a motion to amend it. I'll second that. And Chad, what's the amendment? <laughs> the amendment is to uh, is to do the traffic the downtown traffic study and include the South Pier traffic study in that traffic in that parking study. Do the downtown Correct. parking study, include the South Pier in that parking study as well, and, and study that area and make recommendations, and then to require the developer to do a traffic impact analysis as to what his development is going to do with additional traffic coming out onto South Pier. And technically, the motion would simply be to make approval contingent on those things because you can't vote on an item that's not before the Right. So you're not actually approving doing the study. Correct. You're making approval of this contingent on doing such a study. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? Thank you, Alderman Wolf. Is there a second? I second. Right. Okay, Alderman Lassard seconded. Um, we still have one more button. No, we don't. Alderman Jose. Uh, so just to be clear, that would mean even though if we if it passes tonight. If the study never occurs, the the ordinance changed is void then. That is correct. It's contingent. Okay. Okay, is there any other discussion? There there may be if I may, there may be the possibility of doing a separate um study to facilitate that uh, sooner. Um we would have to talk about it among staff and look at um some <coughs> TIF 6 expenditures down there, but I think there might be a way to get the parking study going sooner than the 2017 capital request for the downtown. Alderman Wolf. Thank you. I guess I have a question for uh, um, a City Attorney Adams. Could we make a motion to have the study for, South, for the South Pier area um, done quickly? Versus but waiting for, ne you know, the, the full study. The study is not on the agenda today. Right. So what's on the agenda is changing the, the zoning. So you're going to approve or not approve the zoning, or you're going to approve it contingent to various things going on. You can't do, at this point, a separate motion on let's do a study, that kind of thing, because that's not on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. I think the other opportunity you have is to follow through with Alderman Bellinger's suggestion that this be dealt with at the planning commission level, and that way um, the project will not be impinged, and Chad can still work to make those funds available uh, from TIF 6 so that we could do this irregardless of the capital improvements. Okay. Uh, did you want to, okay, opening up the floor again? The developer would like to make another comment. Is there any objection? Could we open the floor? Seeing none, uh, would you like to step up? We can open up the floor to the citizens. My only comment is short in that uh, we need to make sure that <coughs> the traffic study that we do, any change that we do that's going to stop us for, let's just say, the next six months, or excuse me, 60 days, is going to put this project off a whole other year. And I think that's very important to, to think about. We need to keep this process moving forward, and I have, I have the utmost willingness to keep working with the council and the planning commission, but I, we, we need to get this rezone done today. And then let's address the planning or the, the parking issues and how we're going to address that at planning commission next week or the week after. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wolf. Thank you. I guess I want to um, I do. restate my my motion. I would like to see us pass this as it's written, um, accept and adopt, and pass the ordinance, um, knowing that the. The council and, and city planning can approve um, the actual parking study and, and parts that we had discussed. Is that a withdrawal of your, so your I'm amendment? Withdrawing. Yes. Okay, so the original motion was withdrawn. Um, Alderman Wolf made a substitute uh, motion. Is there a second to that substitute motion? I'll second. Okay, we have uh, another motion on the floor under discussion. Alderman Lassard. Okay, Alderman Bourne. 
Thanks, Mayor. Uh, would it be appropriate to open up the uh, floor for the people that want to make comments again before we vote on this? I mean, they've heard everything. and Maybe they've got a couple more comments that would be useful to us. I'd make a motion to open up the floor to the people that want to speak again. Is there any objection to opening up the floor to the people that previously spoke in the public hearing? Seeing no objection. Uh, Mr. Moeller, would you like to step up? First of all, I'd like to address the two aldermen here. Uh, number one, the slow growth down there has been due to the improper model of the individual lots along the river. It's very difficult to put a 2,500 square foot building in there, get enough rent from above <coughs> and below to pay for the taxes and everything. That, that was the worst mistake we did, okay? That slowed the growth down. You can develop down there. There's a lot of places. He's not going nowhere. He even said he would, that they wouldn't be going anywhere. I want the housing down there, okay? They're not going nowhere. He just said he just said that if I had to do it, I could. But now that he sees that everybody's on edge, he's really, you know, coming back strong-arming now, okay? <clears> the <throat> other thing is we have, a, we have an alderman that called these people crazy, insane. You don't understand the problem down there. You don't understand the project enough. I've put as much due diligence in three years just trying to study for my next project down there. And the amount of miles and stuff that I have put in to develop what I've got that are viable businesses, some of the most successful businesses down there. And you're telling me that I'm crazy about this, not wanting these people to come in here? I, don't, I, I want them to come here, but don't talk like that to me. That's insane for you to be talking like that. He's not going anywhere. The south side of that... <clears throat> the land between Illinois and Fisherman's Road is some of the most developable property that you have. It's within 100 yards of Lake Michigan. You have free access to, the, to the, the conservatory area. These people that are in here making these decisions do not, I live it. I live it every day. I walk the whole property. Four and a half miles, I do a walk around the property. I'm living it. I'm the one that's the only person out there at night living all around the year, all the different times, when weird people are walking around there and there's no police and everything around there, I'm the person living it. And you're not, nobody has asked me for input into this. Nobody has suggested, hey, Bob Mueller, maybe, he, you know, this guy's got a lot of invested into this place. And not once have I been invited in a committee, a study, nothing. And to jump into it, and I, and I, uh, I really applaud you. If you're smart enough to realize if they go ahead and pass that, you have no consequences afterwards. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Roberts? Again, I've been down there for six and a half years, and I agree with Bob. None of you have been here. If anybody can remember the ice skating rink that was down there, I helped develop that with um, Dave and all the guys. But the point is, is this guy, yeah, took him a year. I put six and a half years of my life down there in South Pierre. I'm with Bob. I've lived down there for four and a half years, day in and day out, seeing this traffic. He thinks he put in a year? I think to the city, it takes more than a year to develop <coughs> something that you have in this parking ordinance or whatever you have, or how many parking lots you gotta have. You're beyond that. That's old. You need to reevaluate that how much parking is needed in an area like that because this has gotten bigger than you think it has. And I don't understand how you guys as council members do not understand how big South Pier has gotten. And I think you guys need to go back and look at your parking study and going, wait a minute, we got this many people coming in, we got this much parking, and we're gonna do what? We're going to bring in housing? You mean there's nowhere else to put housing in? No. I think the city of Sheboygan wants to figure out how they can get this off their back of what they're going to do with this land so they can get money in. I think you should get more businesses, more things down there, something that would bring you in revenue and taxes, not a developer making money off of your great property that you have in this city. I'm sorry, and that's how I feel, and I'm going to fight to the end for the people of the city of Sheboygan. And I will, put, I will, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a petition or something. This is way out of line. 
Thank you for the comments, Lisa. Yes, ma'am. Well, I agree with everything that these two people have said. However, I don't have the longevity there that they do. I was fortunate enough to have purchased a property a few years back. My son has been living down there, and I recognize everything that these two people are saying just from having been there since June 14th this year. So there is a problem. There's a traffic problem. There's a parking problem. It is a beautiful, beautiful part of Sheboygan. And I'm afraid if you go forward with the idea that these studies are going to be done, you're putting the cart before the horse. You should have done these studies prior <coughs> and allowing the developer himself to look into the traffic study, I think that's something the sh city should do because you're not going to have a conflict of interest. He wants it to go forward. His engineer is going to be in favor of going forward. So he is going to see what he wants to see in any study. So that's something that the city should be looking into. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for those comments, ma'am. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Administrator Hufflin. The speakers tonight have uh, expressed concern regarding uh, traffic study as well as a parking study. Uh, initially, uh, there was, uh, by uh, Alder Wolf, a uh, possible friendly amendment, which was ultimately withdrawn. In light of the continued discussion, I, I would like to put forward for your consideration a possible amendment to the conditions that a completion occur to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a traffic study prior to phase one being, prior to phase one commencing. Second is an additional condition of a completion of, to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a parking study before phase two commences. Any other discussion? Alderman Wolf. Um, I would uh, agree with Mr. Hoffman's uh, recommendation, and I would put that forward as a as a new motion. I will second that. Thank you for that motion and support. Don't we have a motion already on the floor? Oh, it was withdrawn. Oh, what was it? I seconded the, the original. We have a motion on the floor, but this is an amendment. It's an yeah. amendment to the okay. motion. So we'll be voting on the amendment first and then depending how the could, amendment. Could, could you state the amendment again, please? Sure. Uh, an additional condition uh, that completion uh, to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a traffic study prior to phase one commencing. Second additional condition is for the completion to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a parking study prior to phase two commencing. Under discussion, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. What would be the length of time that would take to get a traffic study completed? Chad, can you comment on that? I would say three to four weeks at the max, maybe a two weeks at the short end, depending on the workload. And just to ask, answer the question of the lady that spoke, typically the city, um, you know, we could hire somebody to do the traffic impact study. That's not been our uh, way, but we recommend who we want them to work with. And then our <coughs> planning, our engineering staff work closely, closely with them because they need a lot of information from us. So I would say a minimum of two weeks, maybe a maximum of a month. Did you have anything else, Alderman Bellinger? No, thank you. Alderman Lassard? Another question, Chad. Could you please say again or explain to me again where these additional pieces of land are in that South Pier district that could be utilized for additional parking, depending on the study, but that we know that they're available to us? There's a there's a property to the south of the triple play or the spaceport building 
and I can't tell you how big that parcel is, but the, there's a depart that parking lot that's in front of <coughs> Prohibition Bistro and then goes like on the south, kind of north, northerly side of Spaceport. Um, that that kind of T looking parking lot, there's a parcel behind Spaceport left. And then directly in front of Spaceport or Triple Play, um, in kind of in front of the uh, water park, there's another parcel there, and that is adjoining that parking lot that's there. So those parking lots could be expanded. So if the potential study came back that we needed to put more parking spots in, the city has the space available to do that, that it won't affect the planning or building of this project. That's correct, and it also won't affect any kind of riverfront development, which is the most taxable property that we would like to not have parking on, but it would allow for interior parking. Okay, Alderman Boren. I just have a question on the traffic study. I would presume that the traffic study is going to be done at, it's going to be done seven days a week, and it'll, it'll include busy weekends down there. It's not going to be from Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, because we have to get a we have to get a true traffic pattern down there, including race weekends, busy weekends, and, and I don't want it done in January. I mean, it it's got to be done the busiest time of the year. So I just want assurances that it's going to take in seven days a week, including Elkhart weekends or whatever weekend is going on, and whatever else is going on in this county. <laughs> yeah. So I'd ask for Ryan Sazman to come up and just address the council as how a typical traffic study is done. Mm -hmm. Traffic studies such as this, they won't use, I mean, they'll look at the 4th of July because that's such a unique situation. But yeah, they'll definitely look at like a high volume weekend, like an Elkhart Lake event going on. I believe possibly what you had down on the June 17th, I believe you might have the Indy races during that time. But yes, they will They will look at a worst case scenario, but probably not the 4th of July because that's, that, that's one day a week. Thank you very much, Ryan. Next is Alderman Jerome. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to quickly say I thought that the study that we did for the potential D-League coming into town really covered event parking well, that we need to see some of that component in the mix for events down there where we can potentially ship people in by bus or other ways to get them in and out rather than the volume of cars. But that's just an aside to that, just as a mention. Thank you. Good point. I think we answered all the questions. Okay, so we have an amendment we're voting on. Uh, before, before we move ahead. Okay. So, and I'm glad you had some discussion because it allowed me to kind of think through. If you're going to make this change contingent, you really need to have, as we've done in previous contingency changes, a specific date. Uh, you can use the date that's in the developer's agreement for commencing phase one and phase two, but that would be really preferably be part of the motion. Really though, a better option is when you're doing a planned unit development type zoning change, you have contingencies within the planned unit development change. And so really probably the better way to handle this would be to put those contingencies that Administrator Hoffland has listed and, and the council uh, has a motion before it on not as a contingency for approving the planned unit development change, but as a contingency of the planned unit development change, meaning that you're approving them and these contingencies are a part of what is required uh, in order to have that particular zoning. This is, planned unit development is a little bit different than a straight residential zoning or um, straight commercial zoning. So I think probably the better way to get to where it appears a number of you wish to go would be that latter. Um, it does, I apologize, it probably does require you to withdraw a motion and make a different motion if that's what you choose to do. Alderman Wolf, did you want to accept that? Yes, please. Alderman Lassard, is that okay with you as well? It is. Okay, we have a, a change in the amendment as the city attorney described. Uh, one last call for any uh, discussion on the amendment. Alderman Trester, you had your light on before, did you? I just, could, before we vote, would you please lay out what we're voting on and how it's gonna be worded? Right, well, in essence, I'll, I'll explain what it is and, and the wording Administrator Hoffman has kind of written down, so I'll, I'll leave that to him if that's all right. Uh, in essence, what you're doing is you're still approving 
the zoning change to planned unit development, but you are changing some of the contingencies within the planned unit development to include that you have to do these various studies prior to uh, construction commencing on phase one and phase two. Okay. Administrator Hoffman. Okay, here we go. Uh, one additional condition is uh, that completion to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a traffic study uh, occur prior to phase one commencing. Second uh, additional condition is the completion to the satisfaction of the plan commission of a parking study prior to phase two commencing. Okay, is there any other discussion? Alderman Boren. Attorney Adams, are you suggesting we should put a date on those? No, I gave you two options and, and suggested the latter is the better option, and that's, and that's the motion that's been okay. made by all the, all the person work. You could all have right. done either <coughs> one, but I would recommend you do what all the person Wolf has all right. moved to do. Okay, seeing no more lights, would the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? I'm going to do the old-fashioned way on this. Selinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Warren? Aye. Damro? Aye. Strong? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Herman? Yes. Nay? Jose? Aye. Hassard? Aye. Lewandowski? No. Rob? Nay. Schneider? Nay. Presser? Aye. And Wolf? Aye. And I four no. Motion passes. Now we're back to the original motion as amended. Is there any other discussion on the original motion with this amendment? Seeing no lights, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? We're voting on the on the zoning change now. Yes. Right. Okay. Eleven eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is resolution number 10 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue, discontinuing an alleged public way located within the bounds of city-owned lanes, commonly known as the Shukert Farm property. Alderman Wolf. Uh, I would like to make a motion to pass resolution. Second. Thank you for the motion and support under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Twelve eyes, two no's. Motion passes. Item 8.3 is resolution number 47 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue authorizing the Director of Planning and Development to act on behalf of the Mayor as a certifying officer for the issuance of environmental reviews related to the HUD Community Development Block Grant Program. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, again, I would like to make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item eight point four is resolution number forty eight of 1617 by Alderman Donahue authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the U.S. EPA area-wide Brownfields Planning Grant for the Indiana Avenue Corridor and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to again uh, make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. For other matters, I'll turn it over to the city attorney. 9.1 is a resolution by Alderperson Lewandowski uh, to create a committee to look at what should be done to reduce, reduce the risk of people drowning while at our lakefront. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Alderman Lewandowski. I would like to have this also referred to the committee as a whole. Uh, Alderman Lewandowski, I appreciate that motion and the council can vote on it, but I really think it needs to go to PPNS first and then after they've dealt with it, if they want to, then they can bring it back to council and it could be referred there. But we want to follow the, the committee structure and give them uh, first crack at it. And I really don't like to have jo joint referrals unless it's absolutely necessary. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion for referral? Seeing none, well, all those in favor of the motion uh, for joint referral to the uh, Committee of the Whole and uh, the P Public Protection and Safety Committee signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion is defeated. So then this will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. City Attorney. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next is a contemplated motion for closed session. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.851E, uh, Wisconsin Stats. Uh, where competitive and bargaining re uh, reasons required a closed session for the purpose of uh, deliberation related to development opportunity on parcel number 59281-470968 and number two discuss redevelopment opportunities on indiana avenue and number three uh, 2017 health and insurance benefits for employees second thanks for that motion and support will the clerk please call the roll for closed session Nice. Motion passes. We'll take a three minute recess and I'd like to advise the viewers at home that we will be adjourning in closed session and we will not be coming back on the air after this. We should we should let people know that the city college portion afterwards though isn't